And thank you all for staying up late with us here on The Factor Uncensored. We have a great program planned for you. But first up on The Factor, a very special edition of Angela After Dark that tackles a very specific evil in this world. Parents who either turn a blind eye to their children being physically and sexually abused or even get actively involved in covering the crime up. Now, we've seen this in a case we brought you last night here on The Factor Uncensored. Investigators say 40-year-old Latoya Harris allowed her boyfriend, 41-year-old Terrence Washington, to rape, shoot, shoot twice, once in the chest, and torture her 15-year-old daughter. Detectives also say Harris almost killed her own child in the effort to cover up the crime. Investigators say she set the girl on fire to hide the sexual assault. The host, she is still hospitalized as a teenager, and, but she survived. But she's scared for her life. Deputies say during the course of abuse, the girl lost half her face and an eye. What goes on in the mind of a parent who would sacrifice their child for a significant other or so-called love? Joining us to talk about it, Dr. Angela Jones. So when we reported this story yesterday, it was just heartbreaking mm -hmm. and shocking and that the mother was complicit in all of this. Right. What kind of person does it take to allow your daughter to be sexually abused, mm -hmm. shot in the chest with a shotgun, mm -hmm. shot twice, and then just beaten by this guy and say nothing and then set your own daughter on fire to mm -hmm. try and cover it up according to all the investigators. There's so many implications with this story. The thing is is that we don't know, well actually we do know that the mother was likely a victim as well. But as far as her protecting her child in the best way that she could, she wasn't doing that. So that is the, the problem here, mm -hmm. is that yes, though you are a victim, you are also creating a space for your daughter, who seems to be the most, the biggest victim in this story, to not get any uh, space But is safety. that an excuse, if you're a victim, you should know better and you should want to protect your own? Absolutely, and it's not an excuse. I mean, I, I'm sure he instilled fear in them mm -hmm. and made them believe that their lives were at risk, that if they escaped or if they told anything, that he was going to kill them. But at the space where you find out that she decided that she was going to burn her own daughter to cover up what her boyfriend did, that is where the, you know, the lines are blurred and you're just like, okay. Now, again, we still don't know the details in regards to did he tell her to burn her mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter right you have to escape this situation as best as you can in the middle of the night and you have to risk your life to save another life that is what your job is as a parent is to risk your life put you first before your child gets hurt and she did not do that as you can see she has her full face and unfortunately her daughter does not Absolutely. Now, Terrebonne Parish investigators, uh, and this is just outside of New Orleans, Louisiana, said that the mother also blamed the daughter for mm. everything. And that's, yeah. So when I was looking at this story, that's when I realized, okay, not only was, at first I was like, okay, she's a victim, but then it became, oh, she, she was part of this just as much. She had a loathing, a hate, mm -hmm. literally for her own daughter to the point that she allowed this to happen. You, you go to the authorities, you tell them that your daughter is to blame. You really actually believe that deep in your spirit. It's mm -hmm. one thing to say it to like defend yourself or maybe, you know, make him like ease up. But it's another thing when you get caught, you get arrested and you still report it's her fault. And you're looking at this kid who just lost an eye, who just a year before apparently was perfectly normal living with relatives. Mm -hmm. And for those who wonder, how do you get that kind of hate, that kind of loathing for your daughter, especially if there is a, another man who's not even the biological father, not your husband, mm -hmm. but you, you're so in love with him, That's infatuated, <laughs> that you hate your daughter now. He created, I'm sure he created a triangle in that situation where he's raping, unfortunately, the daughter, making the mother jealous. The mother then lashes out on the daughter. And he created this cycle and she fell into the cycle and also became a victim to it. But however, she's the adult, she's the, the parent, she's the one who was supposed to protect. So it, it's a very twisted unfortunate tale that you see think you only can see like in these dark scary movies but this is real life and it mm -hmm. happens unfortunately 
often that women allow men to come into their lives, either their own fathers or another man or an uncle or whatever, and allow them to abuse their children in any way that they want to and then turn a blind eye to it. It's disgusting and there's not really a word for it. I mean, what type of person does it? The, the person that's at the bottom of the barrel, actually below the barrel. So there's not really even a title for it. It is pure evil, as you said. No, they said they were able, because the abuse began many years ago and then she was taken away by family Family Protective Services mm -hmm. in Louisiana then somehow ended up back with her mother and the boyfriend. Mm -hmm. But the abuse had been going on for many years mm -hmm. and how they were able to hide it according to investigators in Thibodeau, Louisiana, Terrebonne Parish, that they did not uh, have her in home, they had her in home school. Mm -hmm. They did not allow her to go in public. Right. So they kept her in secret with this abuse. And the people that she was living with before she went back to live with her mother and the boyfriend, they were trying to reach out. They weren't really able to get in touch with her. They weren't able to check with her. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't even know where they were. So however the mother was able to get her daughter back, um, unfortunately, she tricked the system or the mm -hmm. system didn't really work in favor for the daughter and they allowed her to basically go into the hands of a potential murder, of evil, of someone who basically has ruined her life for the rest of her life. So I also think this is a failure in our system for not doing their checks and balances before she was able to go back to her mother. This is a lifetime of recovery for this young girl. Absolutely. Physically and psychologically. Yes. And I mean, just hearing about the wounds, I, of course, I haven't been able to see the wounds. This is not something that you can get surgery for and it's just gonna go away. Right. She will be permanently, unfortunately, handicapped or damaged on her face. And I hear that they're trying to get her a prosthetic eye, but she's only gonna have one eye. This is something that nothing is going to be able to cover up. So unfortunately, she is she's suffering. And if they go to jail, they'll be able to go to jail with their full body, their full face, and their full health. And they have left a child left to the hands of health care providers, likely for the rest of their and lives. And you see it there in that video that we were just showing mm -hmm. there, just heartbreaking. It is. Dr. Angela Jones, thank you for joining us here on mm -hmm. The Factor on Censor for this important story. So